Jeff Alexander live from Canton to explain how the color purple plays a role in this. Jeff. Hi, Cammie. Hi, Bill. When Brett Favre returned to Lambeau Field last year to be inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame and to have his number retired, see most of the wounds from his stint in Minnesota were healed. But fans coming to Canton this weekend to see him enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame will be reminded that number four didn't always play for the green and gold. For each new member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, a locker display highlights their career. In Brett Favre's locker, that's right, a Vikings jersey. No doubt uh, Brett is, is referred to as a Green Bay Packer, but part of our job is to tell the whole history of the game. And our job is to tell the impact that Brett Favre had on the history of the NFL. And so some of the Packers fans are a little upset about that Vikings jersey in there. But that Vikings jersey is not any jersey. It is a jersey that Brett Favre wore when he set the NFL record for most consecutive starts. And that to me is one of the most amazing records in the history of the NFL because we're talking about a quarterback. While not thrilled about seeing purple in Favre's locker, fans say it's important to keep Favre's overall career in perspective. I saw that on, on uh, the internet the other day, but uh, you know, they say Brett had nothing to do with it. It was the curators and you know what? <laughs> We love him for what he did, you know, for the organization. Despite an occasional groan, Packers fans visiting the Hall of Fame will have to get used to the Vikings jersey. If we don't put that on display, we're not doing Brett justice. We're not doing the history of the game justice. And I think Packers fans should take pride because to get to, to that record, he obviously had to play so many years in Green Bay. Brett Favre now has the jacket, and all that's needed is the bronze bust for him to take up permanent residence in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Last night, Favre received his gold jacket from his wife, Deanna, at a beautifully choreographed ceremony in downtown Canton. Over 140 Hall of Famers welcomed the class of 2016. Favre and Ron Wolf, Hall of Fame class of 2015, shared a nice moment when the made-for-TV event was in commercial and the lights went down. But those two are among the biggest reasons the lights still shine brightly on the NFL's smallest city. And among those in attendance last night was the first member of the organization to meet Favre when he arrived in Green Bay for the very first time. Well, I just can't wait to see him put on a gold jacket, honestly. It's something that's well-deserved. It's uh, going to be emotional for me because I saw him at the very beginning, and uh, now I get a chance to see him put an exclamation point on a great career. You picked him up in the winter in Green Bay. What kind of jacket was he wearing that night? Well, at least I did one thing right in my career. I picked up Brett Favre at the airport. I didn't screw that up. Uh, but he turned his program around. Mike Holmgren. Uh, needs to be brought up in this Hall of Fame conversation uh, because he trained him. He trained us and we trained Brett together. And um, all I can say is this is a great weekend. The first member of the 2016 class to receive his gold jacket last night was Kevin Green, fourth on the all time sacks list with 160. Green, of course, the former outside linebackers coach for the Packers. Brett Favre said to the audience last night the hardest he was ever hit was by Green but also said the best juke movie ever put on a pass rusher was against Kevin Green. Both men will talk with reporters for the first time in Canton later on today as the Hall of Fame weekend festivities continue and we will be here to bring them to you. Reporting from Canton, Chris Roth, Action 2 News. Hi, Cammie. Brett Favre admits that none of this has sunk in yet, even though he is now a little more than 24 hours away from officially being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Favre's whirlwind weekend continued early this morning. He had live TV appearances here and then a photo shoot with his fellow classmates and the Hall of Famers that are here in attendance, including Ron Wolf. Now, this all came less than 12 hours after last night's gold jacket ceremony. Favre may have trouble believing he's a Hall of Famer at this point, but even he can see why that's the case. It's funny because I was on stage last night and I, in spite of what people may think, I don't sit around the house and watch highlight films with myself. Um, no one would watch them with me, by the way. But I was watching them last night and I was like, I was pretty good. You know? I hope I didn't give that impression, but I was thinking, yeah, I was pretty good. And I'm also thinking, it wasn't that long ago, so 
Imagine 20 years from now how great I'll be. <laughs> That was classic Favre today, and you'll hear coming up in sports why he thinks he has this Hall of Fame resume, and Jeff, a resume that includes a couple of other stops. It does, and that means Packers fans aren't the only ones here in Canton to celebrate Favre's big day tomorrow night. We've come across fans from all across this country, and yes, they are wearing number four Falcons jerseys, number four Jets jerseys, and Vikings jerseys. While many Favre fans say they like the Packers, even cheer for them. They love Brett Favre, and he's the reason they traveled here this weekend. You know, been a fan forever. You can't go wrong. He's great for Green Bay and did good in uh, Jets and as well as the Vikings, you know, but definitely the Green Bay years were the most, moment, most memorable of all. It's his heart for the game, his passion, his drive. I mean, he's a leader. Hey, he's just awesome to watch him play and the way he leads the team. I mean, he plays hurt. We've made our room reservations two years ago, <laughs> and it was easy. We just knew he was getting in this time. Action 2 News Sports Director Chris Roth kicks off our coverage from Canton tonight. 24 hours from now, Brett Favre will officially be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Saturday's induction ceremony will culminate a whirlwind weekend for Favre and his five classmates here in attendance. Now that class joined the current members of the hall, including former Packers GM Ron Wolf, Friday morning for a photo shoot. Favre also has the gold jacket to prove he belongs and will unveil his bronze bust Saturday, cementing his place in the hall. But he admits he still feels a bit out of place here in Canton. You kind of get the, the feeling that over time it sinks in. I mean, I, I, I get that I'm, you know, I'm about to be a member um, of this exclusive club, but it really hasn't sunk in yet. It, it really hasn't. I just I don't know if I'll ever feel like an equal to these guys. I understand that I'm one of, you know, um, what, 300 or so that are in this club now, but I just I hold the, these guys in the highest of regards and um, and as it should be. But what he does know is what he'll do when all this pomp and circumstance of the weekend comes to an end and the Hall of Famer is back home Monday in quiet Mississippi. I probably cut grass on my front lawn with my gold jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> It's too hot for that now. People are like, what is wrong with that guy? <laughs> too many hits to the head. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't think many people are going to say, hey, Brett, you know, we'll have supper for you here in a minute, and we'll we'll wine and dine you, and we'll press your coat. And I don't think any of that's going to happen. Well, it is Favre, so you never know. Reporting in Canton, Chris Roth, Action Two Sports. Jeff Alexander begins our live coverage from Canton, Ohio. Jeff. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, where the lines are long, the stadium is filling up, and the stage is set for Brett Favre to enter the NFL's most exclusive club tonight. Now, before the induction ceremony, however, tonight, Brett Favre had a little order of business. One more thing on his Hall of Fame to-do list. He joined the other members of the Class of 2016 in the annual Hall of Fame parade this morning through the streets of Canton. Then, while Favre was trying to get some rest this afternoon, Packer fans were in town getting revved up. The Packers held a fan pep rally in nearby Green, Ohio, where well over a thousand rowdy fans turned out. They were joined by several of Brett Favre's former teammates, including Leroy Butler, Antonio Freeman, and William Henderson. Both fans and former players say they expect to see an emotional Brett Favre tonight. You know, the town of Favre built, it's going to be emotional, it's going to be great, it's, Deanna's speech is going to be good, and we're, we're excited to see them. Tears, a lot of emotion. <laughs> um, I think he's just so appreciative of what he has. I think he made the comment that his speech is going to be like the way he played, so it'll be exciting. <laughs> it's kind of off the cuff, and uh, but I, I'm sure it'll be very sincere. I'm expecting Brett to have a great time and soak in the moment. I'm expecting tears. Uh, but humility has been always one of the things I've uh, enjoyed about playing with such a dominant character, dominant figure in the game. 
And a lot of fans here say they are really looking forward to hearing from the person presenting Brett Favre tonight. Of course, his wife, Deanna, only the second time a wife has ever presented her husband in Hall of Fame history. And with me now, sports director Chris Roth donning a poor man's uh, gold jacket. <laughs> Chris. Thanks, uh, Jeff. <laughs> there's a, an unveiling tonight we've all been waiting for. Yeah, we all know. Tonight's ceremony is the final act in this weekend-long coronation of Brett Favre into the hall. He will give his induction speech tonight. He will be the last of the eight to speak tonight. And then, of course, unveil his bronze bust, which will immortalize him with the game's all-time greats. Now, Favre, like the rest of us, has yet to see the finished product from Hall of Fame lead sculptor Blair Buswell. The artist took measurements the day after Favre was elected to the hall, and a few months later, he brought a clay mock-up to Mississippi for a day-long posing session that is absolutely essential for the artist to capture the man. When he came down to Mississippi, he said, I need eight hours of you sitting pretty much still. I don't know if I, even my teachers in school were, could not get that done. Well, he sat still for me for the whole day. We had a great time just talking about football, family. When he uh, pulled the sheet off after he unboxed this, he said, well, what do you, what do you think before he started? And it was supposedly a kind of a, a startup of it looked like a big ball of clay to me. Maybe, maybe I look like a big ball of clay. I don't know. Maybe gray, gray clay. And I just asked him going in, I said, do you want to bite someone's head off or do you want to be happier there or somewhere in between? <laughs> Can you tell us, did he want to bite someone's head off or was he the happier farm? He wanted more of the intense look. He did. And his wife walked in and says, he's not smiling. He loved this game. Don't men and women always have disagreements? <laughs> Ultimately, the, the man says, whatever. <laughs> Am I right? Whatever. You know, you win. Um, I don't think I look good with my hair parted that way, but hey, so be it. I think the bust is going to be a lot better than the, the real product. Okay, so now we know he won't be smiling and his hair will be parted. Buswell has been doing this for 33 years. He has sculpted nearly 100 of the busts that are now in the Hall of Fame, including four of the eight this year. And he calls that moment when they lift off the drape, the unveiling, both scary and exciting. We'll find out tonight. We'll have more from Brett Favre on what he expects to say to the crowd and the television audience tonight. That's coming up later in sports. Kristen? Well, Brett Favre just wrapped up speaking after being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And now sports director Chris Roth joins us live from Canton, Ohio. Hi, Kristen. Behind me, fans filing out here of Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Many of them went into this stadium over six hours ago. But what they heard in about a 36-minute speech from their beloved Brett Favre made every single minute spent in that stadium worth it. It was classic Favre, off the cuff, emotional, and fantastic, quite frankly. It began once he was the eighth inductee to be introduced, his wife Deanna on stage with him to unveil the bronze bust, which he had not seen in its finished state until tonight. In fact, none of us had seen it in its finished state, obviously, until tonight. Favre told us yesterday he was going to give his speech tonight just like he played. In other words, who the hell knows what's going to come out of his mouth. It lasted for 36 minutes. The one thing he promised was he would make every effort to let everyone know just how important his late father Irv was to his career, and he certainly accomplished that. So Deanna says to me on the plane, you know, your dad had said to me that he had hoped or could not wait for the day that you were inducted into the Hall of Fame so he could introduce you. And up until that moment, I had never thought about the Hall of Fame. And so a new goal had entered my mind then and there. And I said to myself, I will make it to the Hall of Fame. This is something I've never told anyone, including Deanna. I, my dad was my high school football coach. He was the head football coach. He coached me and my two brothers. I'm waiting for my father to come out so we could leave. It was dark. And I overheard my father talking to the three other coaches. And I heard him, and I, I assume I didn't play as well the previous week only because of what he said. And he said, I can assure you one thing about my son. He will play better. He will redeem himself. I know my son. He has it in him. And I never let him know that I heard that. I, I never said that to anyone else. But I spent the rest of my career trying to redeem myself and make him proud. 
and I hope I succeeded. <laughs> Brett Favre at his best. The crowd loved it. He later thanked the crowd for everything they did for him in his career. Obviously, this was a very pro Packer crowd tonight. They erupted in cheers of Go Pack Go when Brett's picture came on before he was even going up to the stage to be enshrined tonight. They loved it when he said, I'll always be remembered as a Packer. That cheering went on for a while as well. And they really loved it when he talked about his teammates. And we'll have some of that for you coming up a little bit later on in sports. News continues right after this.